Hey, I'm Steve with the uh, Dallas Makerspace and uh, we're going to make some fused plastic fabric today from grocery bags. Uh, let me start out by telling you what tools I'm going to use. I've got some uh, scissors, uh, I've got an iron, and this is just a standard cheap $10 iron I got at a discount store. You should not use your wife's iron because if any plastic gets on it, it will melt onto the iron and become a permanent part of it, making it unusable for ironing clothes. Uh, I've got some paper here, which I will explain momentarily. And the most important thing you'll need are a lot of plastic bags. We're working with a couple different kinds of plastic, as you can see from my pile here. Uh, and I find it's easy if you sort it out into like kinds so that you can uh, get enough bags of the same type to make a nice piece of uh, stuff. And we're going to be making a sort of a sewable fabric out of this. Uh, there are a couple of kinds of plastic that you can use. One kind is HDPE, which is number two, and that's high density polyethylene. It's very crinkly, it's usually very thin, but it's also pretty strong. Uh, the other kind of plastic that you can use is LDPE, which is low density polyethylene, and it's type 4 on the little recycle symbol. It's a much thicker plastic and it's a little more flexible, not as uh, crinkly as the other kind, but it tends to not be as strong. Um, and what I'm going to use right now is a Target shopping bag. These are uh, quite popular because of the pattern with all the dots, and if you look on sites like Flickr, you can find entire outfits that designers have made using this pattern. Uh, and this is an LDPE, or low density polyethylene bag. I actually find them a little easier to work with than the high density ones. And uh, what I'm going to do to start with is cut this bag up into a couple of pieces to make things easier for us. I'm going to cut off the handles first, and then I'm going to cut off the little seam at the bottom of the bag. And the reason I do that is there are a couple of fan folds on each end, and they make a different number of layers of plastic so that it's a little thicker where the fan fold is. And if you try to fuse them without folding them all out, those thicker areas uh, will make the heat uneven and it won't work quite right. The last thing I'm going to do is cut the bag into two pieces. And what I've done is cut it so that all of the ink parts, all of the patterns are on one of the two pieces. And then the other piece is just completely white. I'm going to do this for two reasons. One is you might want to create fabric that's a solid color, so you just use a few layers of this. Uh, the other is that there's an issue with the ink related to paper. And uh, there are two kinds of paper here on my table. The first is this brown paper, which is just plain old shipping paper or craft paper that you can buy at any office supply store. Its big advantage is that it comes in nice big wide rolls, so you can use really large sizes. Uh, the downside to this is that when you're fusing plastic that has ink on it, the ink will melt and the melted plastic will stick to the craft paper. And when that happens and you try to peel the paper off your nice fused plastic, you're going to get a hole in the paper like this. And the paper from that hole will be permanently fused onto your plastic, making it pretty much useless. So if you're going to be working with ink, this kind of paper that you see here, the white paper, will be better. And uh, this is parchment paper. The disadvantage to it is that it's relatively small. This is the widest I've been able to find. It comes on a roll about like that. So you can have a lot of length, but not so much width. So if you're using inked plastic, you need to use parchment. Uh, you can use the craft paper if you're just doing white. And what I'm going to do is take a few layers of white. I think we'll go with five layers since that's a nice safe number. 
a lot of the tutorials I've seen say you need up to 10 layers. Uh, we've actually been successful fusing as few as two layers. It basically just requires a little patience. Now what I've done is put four layers of white, one layer with the pattern on it. That'll give us a nice clean layout. And I'm smoothing out as many of the air bubbles as I can. Uh, it will be a little crinkly anyway. There's really no way to avoid that. And I've got craft paper on the bottom because there's no ink on that side. I'm using the parchment paper on the top so it doesn't stick to the ink. And the other nice thing about the parchment paper is you can see through it just a little bit. You can see the pattern there. And that helps to let you know what you need to iron. And I'm going to use the top edge of that craft paper to cover up the top because you don't want any plastic getting on your iron if you can avoid it. And many of the tutorials have specific guesses about the temperature you should set on the iron. Many of them say set it to rayon. Uh, we've been setting ours to the maximum heat level and then we control the heat by the speed that we iron. And I've found that's a little easier. Uh, and you can just do it by trial and error to find out what the best time is. So I'm going to make a few passes with the hot iron. And we're not doing anything special here. We're just moving it back and forth like you would uh, with pretty much any ironing procedure. Now, there have been a number of people who've asked if this process uh, produces any toxic fumes because we are heating plastic and plastic often emits toxic fumes when it's heated. The consensus seems to be uh, that this is a fairly safe procedure provided you don't exceed the melting temperature of the plastic. I'm going to turn this over and get just a little bit of heat on this side. Uh, if you do get the plastic hot enough, though, like most plastic, it could uh, outgas a little bit, emit a few toxic fumes. So it's always good to have a well-ventilated area. We're doing this in a garage, and the garage uh, door is open to my backyard, so we've got a nice little breeze in here. And I've got a little bit of uh, heat onto this side, so that should make sure that all of our layers are fused together and it's a little bit crinkly from air bubbles and spaces between the layers that's pretty much unavoidable but the result is a reasonably strong piece of fabric and then the last step that I usually do is cut off the wiggly edges here not strictly necessary but if your intent is to sew together some squares to make a larger uh, piece of fabric. This is a very helpful thing to do. Do this last edge. And then it's also usually a good idea to check your edges and make sure that they are all fused. And frequently you'll find at the very edge some spots that did not fuse completely. You'll see one right here where you can still see some layers of bag. So I usually put it back under and do a final little application of heat all around the nicely cut edge just to make sure that that's all sealed. 45 seconds. And there you have a uh, nice sheet of uh, sewable fabric. So uh, we'll have uh, more interesting stuff later. You can check our website at dallasmakerspace.com.